In this video, we want to continue discussing our comparison tests, um, starting by um, making a few important um, notes on using these comparison tests and a little bit about when to use which of these two comparison tests, and then we'll get into the limit comparison test in our first example. Um, so just to remind ourselves what our comparison test says, remember that the comparison test tells us two different things. Um, if you have a n less than or equal to b n and the sum of b n converges, okay, then the sum of a n converges. And if we have a n bigger than or equal to b n and the sum of b n diverges, then the sum of a n diverges. Okay, so we know those two things. So the thing to be careful about here, if the sum of bn converges and an is bigger than or equal to bn. We know nothing about the sum of an. Okay, we had the same kind of warning with our integral um, comparison test. Oops. Okay, this was left over from that previous problem. So if the sum of bn converges and an is bigger than or equal to bn, the sum of an might converge, just might be a bigger thing that it goes to, or it might diverge, we don't know anything. Similarly, if the sum of bn diverges, okay, and we're in the situation where an is less than or equal to bn, we again know nothing. about the sum of a n. Okay? If a n is smaller than b n, the sum of b n diverges. It could be that the sum of a n also diverges. We can Sometimes you can have sort of smaller types of infinities and things. Or it could be that the sum of a n um, converges. So we just don't know in that case. Okay? So here's some things to keep in mind about trying the comparison test and when to try the comparison test. We want to try a comparison test when the series is like a P series or like a geometric series. So we said this before, but now we're just trying to kind of write it out, remind ourselves this is um, the cases when the comparison test or a comparison test will be helpful. Okay, You'll want to try the, the direct comparison test, the test that has those inequalities. Okay, If there is an obvious comparison, And the inequality is not too difficult to, to show. Okay, we're saying it's easily established, but we know there's, there's always some work to showing that inequality. So if it's not, not too bad, you kind of see how to compare them um, fairly easily, you can go ahead and do that direct comparison test. But often, okay, so we'll say otherwise, we're going to want to use the limit comparison test. And we'll see as we start doing lots of problems, um, when we want to do a comparison, most of the time we're going to prefer the limit comparison test. There'll be some situations where we'll need that direct comparison test, but a lot of the time the limit comparison test um, will be a little bit easier to work with. Um, the main difference between the limit comparison test and the direct comparison test is that that step three, where in the direct comparison test we had to do some work with inequalities, with the limit comparison test we'll have to do some work with limits. Okay, so let's see how this um, test is fully stated. So again, we're going to suppose that the sum of a n and the sum of b n are series with positive terms. Okay, um, the test says that if the limit 
as n goes to infinity of a n over b n. It's a limit of the, the ratio of the terms of a n over the terms of um, b n is equal to a number c where c is positive and finite. Okay, so we could say where c is between 0 and infinity. Okay, then either the sum of an and the sum of bn both converge or both diverge. Okay, so this is, is saying something about the growth rates of the terms here. Um, if the limit as n goes to infinity of the a n over the b n is equal to a constant, then it's saying that these terms are sort of similar in some way, growing at a similar rate, which means the sum of those terms um, will be either both diverging or both converging. Okay, so let's look at our first example here. And in this first example, I'm going to um, show why the limit comparison test is going to work um, a little bit easier here. Um, so let's say um, that we looked at this and we saw I've got, you know, powers of n over powers of n. This is a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n over 2n cubed minus 1. Uh, let's say I, I thought about doing the, um, the regular comparison test on this and not the limit one. So what if we tried the direct comparison test using what we think would be um, sort of the obvious comparison. So what would happen? Okay, so we'll just kind of try this out, and then we'll we'll go ahead and, and see how to do this with the limit comparison test. So I know I would need to choose a bn. So let's say I chose the sum from um, n equals one to infinity of n over two n cubed. That seems to be sort of the standard way I'd go about choosing something. So this is one over two n squared. Um, so I know that one half the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n squared converges by the p-series test. Okay, since I have p equals two is bigger than one. Okay, and then I'd try to do something with the inequalities. Well, I have um, my ans here being n over 2n cubed minus 1, and I have the bn's being n over 2n cubed. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Well, I would start, I would say, well, n, 2n cubed minus 1 is less than 2n cubed, so 1 over 2n cubed minus 1 is bigger than 1 over 2n cubed, and then I could mul multiply both sides by n, and that preserves the n equality here. Okay, well, I've now shown that um, my uh, series itself, terms of the original series here, are bigger than 1 over 2n squared. But what I wanted to show in order to show that um, my original series converged by comparing it to this convergent p-series is that the original series is smaller. So this inequality is true, but it's not helpful at all. Okay, all I've I've done is shown that my the terms of my original series are bigger than the terms of a convergent series, and that's the case where I can't draw any conclusion. So, just kind of going through using the obvious comparison test here, um, obvious comparison series ends up not being helpful, um, but we can use this same um, comparison series here with the limit comparison test. It turns out that if you wanted to do a direct comparison on this, you'd have to pick the comparison series differently. It would be a little bit um, 
less clear how to choose a good comparison that would work with, with the inequalities. Okay, so let's try our LCT limit comparison test instead. Okay, um, well notice I forgot to check that these were positive terms to begin with and, and I really should have because I do have a minus sign in there so that's not totally obvious right away that that's always going to be positive. So let's go back up here and say do we have positive terms? Okay, well if n is um, greater than or equal to 1, then n cubed will be positive. Okay, so 2n cubed will be bigger than 2. Okay, well then if I subtract 1 from both sides, I do get that 2n cubed minus 1 is bigger than 1, whoops, um, which is positive. Okay, so we are okay. These terms will be, will be all positive because that denominator will, will always be positive. Okay, so now let's go ahead and try the limit comparison test instead. Again, we're going to choose the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n squared. Okay, and I know that this sum here again converges by p series test. Since p equals 2 is greater than 1. Okay, and so now for the step three part, I'm going to get to look at a limit. So we need to compute the limit as n goes to infinity of a n over b n. Okay, so remember our a n's are n over 2 n cubed minus 1, and our b n's here are 1 over 2 n squared. Okay, so our limit will be the limit as n goes to infinity of n over 2n cubed minus 1 divided by bn. So in this case, um, that'll end up being times 2n squared over 1. Okay, So I have the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n cubed over 2n cubed minus 1. Okay, well now I can use my nice rule that um, when I'm doing a limit as n goes to infinity and I have the same highest power of n in the numerator as in the denominator, the limit is just the ratio of those coefficients. Okay, so I see that I get a limit value of 1. Well, remember the condition of the test said that as long as that limit value was a number between 0 and infinity, so I'm even going to specifically excuse me, note that I do have that limit value be being between 0 and infinity, then that means that I can conclude that the series that I compared to has the same behavior, or that my original series has the same behavior as the series that I compared it to. Okay, so now I can say, so by steps 2 and 3 here, um, my original series of this sum of n over 2n cubed minus 1 um, converges by the limit comparison test. Okay, So the limit comparison test I think of as being more forgiving in terms of your choice of something to compare it to. Here we could have also chosen just 1 over n squared um, for our comparison. So this would work as well. Notice that your limit would have ended up being a limit here as n goes to infinity of our a n divided by 1 over n squared. It would have ended up being n cubed over 2 n cubed minus 1. Sorry, that was getting hard to see. n goes to infinity here, 2 n cubed minus 1. That would have been a limit of 1 half, but 1 half is also between 0 and infinity. Okay, So you have a little bit more flexibility in choosing your comparison series with the limit comparison test, which makes it a little bit nicer to use. Okay, So watch the last video to see um, several more examples of applying the limit comparison test.